let's take a look at a concept called the results chain. That is a very central concept in intervention logic. Uh, the results chain basically means uh, we start from somewhere and, and we hope to, uh, to reach uh, some other place. So we start from the inputs. These are the things that we mobilize in order to enable us to, to do the intervention. Yeah? And of course, you can think of, of money, financial resources, but there are others. There are human resources, uh, uh, material, uh, technical, and, and, and also political in the sense that we'll have to be support uh, from decision makers uh, in order to, to um, you know, make sure that this intervention actually produces the change that we would like to see. So we, we are obviously, uh, uh, as an intervention, responsible for mobilizing these inputs, and with these inputs, we do activities. And activities, you know, they, they are expressed by, by verbs to do something, uh, and they are specific tasks. Uh, and these tasks have a very clear uh, aim of producing things. Um, and these things that are produced are the outputs. Yeah, so you can think of outputs as, as, as products or services, or maybe even, you know, infrastructure. That, that are put in place by the intervention. And it's important to realize that these are things that were not there before. So zero before and, and the intervention produces them and therefore at the end of the intervention, they are there purely because of the intervention. If we have produced these outputs, then hopefully uh, we will see outcomes appear. And these outcomes are change. They are effects of what we do. And these could either be a change in behavior of our target groups. Uh, so, so these are the, the, the people or organizations involved directly in the intervention uh, next to, to, to the implementers. And, um, or, or they could be changes in the circumstances of uh, these, these target groups. If we take the example of uh, an intervention in uh, vocational education, then we could uh, think of uh, an intervention where uh, you know, we, we produce uh, uh, innovative uh, teaching methods and, and, and learning materials, maybe even best in, in IT, but we also uh, train the teachers to uh, take into account or to use uh, more modern uh, teaching techniques now, these teachers would, in that case, be the, the primary target group because we work directly with them and, and we hope to improve their circumstances and hopefully also change their behavior because they have to use what we give them, what we develop. If they don't use it, there will be no change and we will just have produced something with no effect. Now, hopefully then these target groups whose behavior or circumstances are changed will uh, enable a wider group uh, of beneficiaries to, to benefit from what we call impacts. And, and impacts, as you can see the definition here, are intermediate or, or even long-term, which means over the span of years, um, changes which uh, you know, are, are not only caused by the intervention, but, but the intervention contributes to these larger changes, but it probably depends on other intervention. It depends on, on other forms of, of policy, maybe, maybe on, on actions of the private sector. Um, but the, the key thing, and you see it at the bottom here of the impact box, is that it, these are effects on final beneficiaries, meaning they, they may, may not be, and, and they are often not part of the intervention itself. Yeah, and, and in the case, the example of uh, the vocational education, we could think of the, the students. Yeah? So even if these students are not directly involved in the activities, the teachers were involved, then, then still, if these teachers use the new methods and they, they change their behavior, then of course we would hope that uh, these, these, these students will, uh, first of all, uh, maybe their, their success rate goes up, you know, they learn more, they, they uh, acquire better skills, and, and maybe even in the end, they have a better chance of, of finding a job.